Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues. Today, we head up to the campus of Upper Iowa University, where we find Heath Grimm in the, in the kitchen, as it were. Heath, welcome to the show. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great, Scott. Thanks for having me. Welcome to the Nike Hot Seat. Upper Iowa is a program that has, for well, since you took over, it's uh, been on a steady climb toward greatness. You just recently hosted the annual Legends Dinner and handed out postseason awards, of course, and you guys are doing quite well, Coach, and I'm super, super pleased for you. Let's talk first about the Peacock wrestlers that um, uh, were there to receive awards. Who got what? Yeah, well, the Legends Dinner, just to give you a little backdrop, that's something we started about 12 years ago. And uh, we had, we always bring back a former wrestling alum to talk. And this year we had national champion Ryan Phillips come back. Uh-huh. You probably remember Ryan. You bet I do. 197-pounder. Yeah, he filled that weight out well. Um, went on a tear and, and won the national tournament for us. He's been out coaching a little bit in the junior college ranks. Came back now to his hometown of Burlington. Um, and reestablished himself here in the state of Iowa as a great coach. But we had Ryan back. He delivered a great message. Um, you know, we talked a little bit pre- uh, previous to that, and I thought he hit a home run with, you know, what it takes to be a champion and, and what were some of the keys to his success. And that translated right into some of the kids getting awards. Um, guys like Logan Hop and uh, Josh Walker, who were two All-Americans for us this past year, really epitomize some of the language that uh, Ryan was echoing as a must if you're going to be successful at this level in Division Two. So, um, you know, Josh Walker, uh, he was a kid from Oklahoma, a four-time state finalist, a three-time champion, uh, wrestled for Joe Renfro in the junior college ranks and was a third placer and a runner-up. Uh, he came in as an instant spark plug for us, and we're looking forward to having him back for a full season next year. Uh, on his quest to win a national title at the D2 level. And and then also Logan Hopp, who will return. He made the national semis this year at heavyweight. Logan, uh, he's a treat to watch. Uh, I don't know, Scott, if you've gotten your hands on him or you've gotten to see him here recently. I believe you might have been in New Hampton. I was. Up. I remember but, Logan. Positive yeah. guy. Yeah, great guy. I mean, he's, he does some really athletic stuff. And uh, he, he got himself on that All-American level this past year, and he's going to be looking for a, a national title quest as well next year. Most of these guys, including Logan, with the Outstanding Wrestler Award, uh, the Outstanding Newcomers of Josh Walker and Nick Baumler, um, and we'll get back to the most wins, decorated, dedicated, yeah. approved. But highest GPA is mm-hmm. an award that um, some guys actually aspire to. Some guys stumble into it. Which is it for Jamie? Huh, that's a good one. I'm going to actually call him out. I'm going to say he stumbled into it. <laughs> he, uh, Quite by accident. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a unique story because his older brother, Tony Galen, wrestled for me, and he won that award three times. And Tony came back for a fifth year. He was, re- he was already graduated early, outstanding student, but we talked him into coming back. But when he went to give his uh, speech, his senior speech, saying, I'm done, thank you very much, the crowd went one more year, one more year. Tony crumbled up his piece of paper, and he threw it away, and he goes, I'm coming back. Oh, boy. Tony, Tony became an All-American that, that fifth year. It was unbelievable mm-hmm. on the rest of that what happened. So Jamie came to Upper Iowa to play baseball. Uh, after a year of ball, he came up and talked to us about uh, getting on the mat, and we welcomed him with open arms. And uh, Jamie, like his brother, really gets it done in the classroom as well. All right, so his his excuse was he wasn't being challenged enough in baseball. It's too easy. He needs a bigger challenge in his life. And Jamie came back to wrestling. Jamie came back to wrestling, and he's got a bright future. He did some really good things in the open tournament second semester. Really so, sit, really heads. so here's here's the cool thing. Jamie's not alone. I mean, six members of the Upper Iowa Wrestling t- Team earned a spot on the NCAA Division II Wrestling Coaches Association All-Academic Team. And if I can stop just right there just for a minute, we surely love to name our stuff. The NCAA Division II Wrestling Coaches Association All-Academic Team. That is a name. Joined, uh, j- joining Jamie, Colby Vance, Hop, okay, Cody Nelson, Lincoln Monroe, and Brock Sorensen. Obviously, they are just absolutely flourishing 
in the uh, the attitude and the aptitude at Upper Iowa. Can you talk about creating a positive academic experience? Well, yeah, that really starts with our university structure of classes, which every you know we want every recruit to know about. I mean, it's two classes at a time, so we're taking these terms that make up a semester. And uh, these kids taking two to three classes every term allows them to really put wrestling as well as their academics on the, on the same level, the top priority, okay? And I think that's a big key to our success here uh, is the structure that the university has developed and, and had now for the last, you know, 40, 50 years. Are you, uh, are you under the impression that, that uh, ADs, uh, assistant ADs, athletic departments are placing more and more importance on academics, and perhaps it'll never really change other than continue to elevate. But it seems to me we're seeing better performance out of our athletes, specifically our wrestlers, and it's being uh, calculated on a national level, and we're seeing these numbers go through the roof. No doubt about it. I've, I've been at Upper Iowa now 17 years, and uh, I've had a few ADs, uh, administrators come and go over that time. And no doubt that uh, David Miller and staff, they really put a strong emphasis, echo it continuously about academics and how we need to really get these kids prepared for life after. Matt, wins and losses take care of themselves, but the classroom is something we must monitor every day because it's why kids are in school to continue to learn and improve themselves. Because one day Matt time does end. Uh, I was talking with uh, Lou Roselli and Joel Greenley about that earlier today. And at some point, you do untie the shoes for the final time. Some even cut them off. So it happens. Yeah. We're talking with Heath Grimm in our Nike hot seat today, talking peacock wrestling, Upper Iowa Peacocks, that is. And it was just um, a few days ago, Upper Iowa Wrestling held their Legends Dinner with Ryan Phillips, the guest speaker, then SIC Wrestler of the Year, NCAA Division II National Champ in March of 2007. And Phillips uh, really encouraged the student athletes that still had eligibility to be ready because it only takes one year to be a champ. And relaying that story, I got to believe he energized a lot of those young peacocks into recommitting themselves to the effort in hand. Would you say that's true? No doubt about it. And maybe not the young ones as much as I thought it struck a chord with the, the guys that are juniors and seniors to be that uh, maybe haven't been the starter uh, or gotten their opportunity to uh, to cash in on that opportunity. And that's what Ryan did. Ryan uh, qualified for the Iowa High School State Tournament one time, won a state title, uh, did the same thing in the college level, qualified for the D2 championships his senior year, and won the, the national title. So I thought it was a great message to the older guys not to give up on themselves and uh, just to stay the course and, and believe in themselves 100%. Coach, let's look back at the season that was a nine and five dual meet records, nothing to uh, be ashamed about, but I know that you're always seeking perfection in the term of uh, finishes. You were able to add two new NCAA Division II All-Americans to the wall, and uh, and the uh, trophy case is uh, looking impressive. The 2017 NCAA Division II championships in Birmingham were not easy this year, Coach. Oh, no, they're getting tougher and tougher. I mean, that's just the name of the game. And, uh, you know, we're not happy with that dual meet record. We are darn proud of placing at the national dual meet championships again, where D2 brings the top 16 teams and the top eight qualify. I think we've done it now nine of the last 10 years. But uh, dual meet wise, we lost a couple heartbreakers. And, you know, winning and losing at the D2 level is minute. Um, so, you know, we, we got some work to do there uh, to, to correct. And guys, I wanted to hit on this when you mentioned Ryan Phillips and motivating these guys. That's exactly what has transpired. Uh, not maybe just directly because of Ryan, but, you know, let's speak about the character of the guys. We got a heck of an off season going right now. These guys are lifting their tail off. And I think uh, these guys know with us hosting the championships in March in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, it gives us a great opportunity to showcase D2 wrestling to the state of Iowa. But, of course, Upper Iowa wrestling to the state of Iowa. And we're going to hopefully be able to be there with you, Coach. It's going to be at the U.S. Cellular Center, downtown CR, and that has, of course, been remodeled, and it looks so nice. Uh, the Peacock Wrestling Team overall placed seventh at the Super Region 3 tournament, which was held in Moorhead, Minnesota, uh, a whole lot closer than, oh, I don't know, say Birmingham, Alabama. Um, and a quartet of those Peacocks, led by Malik Williams, finished third 
in the 125 pound bracket while josh walker and jordan ross and logan hop all place fourth in their respective weights what more can we expect out of these youngsters before i get to i really want you to answer that before we get to the recruiting uh and and expectations for who's coming in the fall well our expectations next year i mean we're going to be standing on that stage in cedar rapids hoisting up a trophy okay uh, that's exactly what's got to happen our that's our mindset each and every day i'm communicating with our guys uh, i'm echoing and, and reminding that is the mindset each and every day i'm thinking about that saturday so are they um so that's 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 a little bit global that picture individually we're bringing back five guys with national tournament experience love it three have been all americans one was a two-time qualifier just as you know be a junior and then we got a, another junior coming back that went to the tournament. Uh, did not go back this year as a sophomore, and he was the number one seed at regionals. Lost a heartbreaker and then lost in another one-point match. Uh, didn't rebound like he should have. But, uh, you know, he, I just got a tweet from him last night. He's down in Florida right now training with one of our other former national finalists. Um, so, uh, you know, he's getting it done, and, he, and he's, he's hardcore about what he, where he wants to be next year. Coach, let's talk real quick about uh, the balance of the awards before we get to, um, you know, the, the issue at hand for me right now is who you have coming and where they're coming from. And I'm always amazed at where the athletes are coming from, from not just across the state, but from uh, in many instances around the country. Most wins, and if I was French, I would say Pinochet. Damien got 27 victories on the year. Yeah, we go, we go with Pinochet. Pinochet, <laughs> okay. Does he but, go with that uh, as well? Or? <laughs> yeah, he goes with that as well. Yeah, no, he's and he's the boy I was just, uh, he was the man I was mentioning here, uh, Damien. He's down in Miami. Uh, we got him and Malik Williams, both are Florida kids. Uh, Damien is down working out with George Borgen or Jorge Borgen. Uh, George, <laughs> he's the man down in Miami uh, right there in, you know, Dade County area. So. Sure. Um, it's great, great seeing those guys train. George looks as strong as he was when he was in an upper Iowa singlet taking second for us, and he's working out there with Damien. Uh, I thought that was outstanding. Um, but, yeah, so Damien, yeah, had most wins for us. Damien had a ton of wins the year before. He's on a pace to collect a lot of college wins before he gets done. All right, most falls goes to Cody Nelson. He had nine of them, Coach, and there's no greater way to end a college wrestling match or any match for that matter, but a fall. It's an impressive statement. Nine of them does Cody uh, Cody Nelson have. Yeah, second year in a row, Cody's won that award. Expect that number to get real big next year. We've we've had guys win uh, winning that like Edwin Cooper, Carl Broghammer winning that with uh, 21 falls. Uh, Cody, uh, he got a little bit of static from some of the guys for winning it with that number. But uh, I, I do think that the four point near fall, uh, we're collecting a lot of texts. We had a lot of texts this year. And uh, sometimes it just it's easier and quicker to get off the mat after you tack them in a tournament as opposed to weren't for that fall. All right, most improved Zach Bruns. Why? Outstanding kid. Uh, well, just record alone, you know, which is is the desired outcome of all these kids. They want to get their hand raised, and Zach went from just having six, seven wins to fifteen wins, and uh, he was actually competing with some really good kids. He wrestled Damian off into a tight match one point match and Damien was ranked number one in the nation for a while. So Bruns is knocking out the door and he's doing some work this year, staying around campus, uh, trying to get himself a spot in that lineup. I like that dedication. At some point we stop going home. Sometimes we stay on campus and that's when the true growth really happens. Jordan Ross, most de dedicated. Uh, and that's the award he, he picked up. I think, um, you know, dedication is huge. Uh, yeah. To the job at hand, to the team, to 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 the Peacocks. I think that's a big statement by Jordan. What are your thoughts? Well, yeah, I'm glad you took the time to say that because uh, yeah, I get emotional just thinking about that award and what it, it what it all entails. Um, but Jordan, you know, with with ma weight management to getting it done in the classroom to being a, a, a quiet leader, uh, just however he exuded himself or, or put himself upon guys. I thought was very healthy. He was the last guy in the practice room. Um, now Jordan actually is is uh, working hard to get himself into the graduate program. I, I um, you know, it might be breaking news, but I, I think pretty soon we're going to be able to announce that he's going to be helping us out 
if he gets his graduate assistantship once he gets into the program. Well, I tell you what, I think we just broke the news. <laughs> most yeah, most the yeah, crossing the T's. <laughs> I'll send you a pen. Most ins I wouldn't want to lose him either. Most inspirational coach, Colby Vance. Can you explain? Well, he was a warrior this year. Uh, you know, hands down, it's a pretty, pretty, uh, you know, maybe general statement to some people. But you know, if you looked at uh, the number of stitches and, and concussion and surgeries and time in the training room, it was just ridiculous what he had to entail this year. And that's actually how his season ended was uh, a kid that transferred in from Oklahoma State um, that, that we found in our weight class at regionals on the front side of the bracket, had a leg in on Colby as he's coming up, shaking him off. And the guy reached over to the far ankle and, and walked him out into a split position. And then you wrestling, you know, knowledgeable people know what's going on. And there goes that hamstring. And uh, he tried to suck it up and come back. And he did get it, collect his 100th college win. Um, you know, up there at the regional tournament, but you know, that, that did it in. And so his effort to get back out there, I know inspired a lot of people, other coaches came up to me, other athletes, uh, he got a standing ovation, got some people clapping for him. So well-deserved award. These guys don't do it alone coach and neither do you. You've got a solid staff on which to lean. Let's, let's talk about your assistant coaches, strength, conditioning, athletic trainers, and most importantly to me, sports information director. I think each one of these guys gets an award this year and it is just absolute heart diligence and dedication to the athletes that they're working with. Can you talk about your staff? Yeah. Well, number one, I got to start with my head assistant, uh, Nate score. Uh, we're talking about academics and where that success comes from. Yeah, I, I said, first and foremost, let's not forget about the structure we have. But uh, it, it, it's Nate then doing the day-to-day -day task and staying up on them, calculating GPAs, letting them know where they're at to get these awards accomplished. Um, we did a pretty good job before Nate got here of uh, crisis managing academics. You know, but, you know, Nate, a lot of his emphasis coming in was – was geared at long-term academic development and then transitioning them into careers. And uh, that's exactly what's going on. So Nate, big kudos to him. Couldn't do it without him. Um, a couple other guys on the mat. We had Carl Broghammer, up where I was most, you know, uh, successful wrestler as far as wins go. Had 142 of them. Uh, Three-time All-American, four-time academic All-American, a local kid from, you know, Manchester. Um, went to West Delaware High School, so Carl's around and does a great job with the upper weights. I'm sure guys like Ryan Parmley, uh, Logan Hop, you know, those guys would attest to that. Um, you know, and then Matt Paul is stuck around uh, to help us out this year, and, and he's a guy, great wrestling uh, brain, great head on shoulders. He is moving on with his life. Uh, he's going to be, he wanted to farm. It's been a lifelong goal of his, and I know he got some land uh, rented or bought. He's going to be sub teaching and, uh, you know, things are going great for Matt Paulus, but uh, we're hoping now to pull Jordan in and to kind of fill those shoes. Uh, you know, you, you echo some of these other names, you know, like strength and conditioning. We got a guy named Colin uh, that does a great job in our weight room, and uh, he's the one that's really uh, motivating these guys, giving them structure on what has to happen uh, in this off season. He comes on up there, gets in the wrestling stance. You know, we kind of show him where we got to get stronger. He's just not, you know putting in some numbers and, and plugging in some names and saying, here you go. He's really buying into what it takes to be good at this uh, Division II college wrestling level. Um, we also got a guy named Ryan Fonkert. He's our new um, athletic trainer. We had Matt Rukert for years. Matt transitioned over to football. We got Ryan to come in this first year, and he did an outstanding job. Um, and then, obviously, you mentioned Howie Thompson. Um, Howie does, he's, like you said, he's the most knowledgeable seven foot guy on the planet uh, <laughs> wrestling. So he, he, he was sure a basketball guy. But, hey, he's taking on some big things. He's, we're actually up Iowa. We're going to, we're going to be the home of the D2 uh, national ra wrestling rankings next year. I'm kind of going to be the overseer and how he's going to be the office that pumps it out. So Howard's really taking another step forward and I give him big kudos and praise for taking this on. Only two guys in my life that uh, I know named Howie are both over seven feet tall. How about that? Honorable mention, let's give it up. Lindsey Richard and J.C. Arbogast for the management positions that they hold and have done a great job. 
But, Coach, we also have to thank you because what you've done this year and what you continue to do year in, year out, is provide a great educational opportunity and outstanding uh, rewards and benefits to these kids who put in the work. And uh, you inspire them to do well, Coach, and I appreciate that. Well, I, I appreciate that. That that really means a lot to me just because uh, that's what that's what our life is. Uh, you know, I share it with the, these guys. Obviously, I, I got a, a wife and two kids, and, uh, I, you know, I'm a family man. But, uh, you know, we got to give the rest of whatever we got left in the tank to our program, and, and that's exactly what we do. And that's what I ask of our coaches and our staff and uh, all of our athletes. And I feel like that's why we got the culture we have. And it's all about culture, baby, and they do it well. Today you'll be celebrating, or tonight I should say, your mother's 65th birthday. Happy birthday to mom. And I uh, hope you guys have a wonderful day together celebrating her life. I appreciate that. Well, that's all outstanding. That's right. That's the roots of it right there. That's it. Coming, going back to Osage, <laughs> Iowa. So that's where it started. That's what I'm talking about. Osage's favorite mom. <laughs> Carol. Happy birthday, mom. Yeah, Heath Grimm has been our guest in the Nike hot seat today. He's the head coach of the Peacocks of Upper Iowa University, a frequent guest and a great friend. Heath, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Appreciate it, Scott. For all of us at Takedown, I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy.